Israel's intelligence agency Mossad recruited agents from the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC, unit responsible for the security of high-ranking officials to plant explosives in three rooms of a building where Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh was located, reports The Telegraph. The initial plan was to assassinate Haniyeh in May during the funeral of Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi, who died in a plane crash. Two Iranian officials told The Telegraph that the operation was not carried out due to the large number of people inside the building and the high likelihood of failure. Instead, two agents placed explosive devices in three rooms of an IRGC hostel in northern Tehran where Haniyeh might have stayed. According to officials with surveillance footage on the building, the agents were seen entering and exiting several rooms within a few minutes. It is said the operatives later fled the country but had a source in Iran. At 2 a.m. on Wednesday, they detonated the explosives in the room where Haniyeh was located from abroad. It is believed that Mossad recruited agents from Tehran's Ansar al-Madi Protection Unit for high-ranking officials. They are now certain that Mossad hired agents from the Ansar al-Madi Protection Unit, an IRGC official told The Telegraph. He added, upon further investigation, they discovered additional explosive devices in two other rooms. A second official from the IRGC's elite military forces told the publication that this is a humiliation for Iran and a serious security breach. The official said a task force was set up to come up with ideas to frame the killing as unrelated to a security breach. It is still a question for everyone how it happened. I can't make sense of it. There must be something higher up in the hierarchy that no one knows about, he added. Currently, various IRGC sectors are blaming each other for the failures. The first source reported. Ismail Kani, commander of the IRGC's Quds Force, stated that the breach humiliated everyone and called for the dismissal, arrest and possibly execution of those responsible. The Supreme Leader has summoned all commanders several times over the past two days. He wants answers, the official reported. On July the 31st, Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh was killed in Tehran. It is still unclear how he died, whether from an airstrike or a bomb planted in the building. Iran and Hamas blamed Israel for the attack, though Israel has not officially claimed responsibility for the operation. Russia threatens to start considering Japan as a hostile nation of Japanese-made Pac-3 interceptor missiles would end up in Ukraine. This comes in response to a recent deal between Japan and the United States, as reported by NHK. In late July, Japan's defense ministry agreed to transfer domestically manufactured Pac-3 missiles to the US, which is facing a shortage of interceptors due to its support for Ukraine. The deal, valued at approximately $19.5 million, marks the first time Japan has transferred Pac-3 missiles under its revised defense equipment export guidelines. The Russian Foreign Ministry's deputy spokesperson, Andrei Nastasian, expressed skepticism about the deal during a 31st of July news briefing. He warned that if Japanese missiles are transferred to the Ukrainian army, Moscow would view Tokyo as hostile to Russia. Nastasian claimed that Russia reserves the right to take the most resolute countermeasures, including in the context of bilateral relations with Japan, although he did not specify what actions might be taken. The situation unfolds as Ukraine aims to strengthen its air defense against continued Russian drone and missile strikes. The Japanese government announced in its 2022 goal to increase defense spending that it would provide financial support to defense industries looking to increase production. However, these incentives are only applicable for weaponry meant for the nation's self-defense forces and not exports. The manufacturing hiccup in Japan demonstrates the difficulties Washington has connecting the industrial support of its international partners to its intricate supply chains. Even with the assistance of its close allies, the U.S. is having difficulty meeting Ukraine's need for arms, especially air defense systems capable of fending off Russian attacks due to supply chain bottlenecks. Japan's incapability to increase output would undermine Washington's broader plans for expansion, 
given the resurgence of the need for Patriot missile defense systems globally and the steadily growing demand for PAC interceptors in Ukraine.